this week's show, Georgia Southern Football opens preseason camp. We'll take you out and hear from head coach Tyson Summers and some of the players. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles Nest. Inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, it's been a while since we've uh, done an Eagles Nest show. We've kind of let the summer go by, but now with football having picked up, they had their first practice of the season this week. They had the media day with the Sun Belt, and then they had the media day with us uh, here in Statesboro over at Paulson Stadium this week. So let's kind of Fill people in on from the last time we really talked football was more during the spring. Now they've had the summer, got all the freshmen on board. It looks like they got pretty much everybody into school that they had said uh, when, after signing day. That's always a good thing and didn't really have uh, very many uh, people leave the team over the spring. I think there was one or two exceptions, but for the most part, everybody and all the noteworthy people are back. Yeah, good to have that retention. Also good to have some help. There are some guys who were held out in the spring that are now at 100% going into fall camp, so that's good to see. And really, I was a little bit surprised here the first couple of days. Usually you get into fall camp, and it's all coach speak. It's all cliches. It's all glad to be back and working towards a good season and like what we see. And you get a little bit of that, but you really also get the sense that this is a team that's motivated. It's hungry. They don't need to be reminded how last year went for them, especially with all the expectations that were placed on them this year. A little bit different story. You're coming off of a down year. You're losing a ton of guys. There are a lot of starters in that first game that we have no idea who they're going to be yet. So really just uh, kind of like a Christmas in July, it seemed like everybody was ready to get right down to work. Yeah, we had a chance to talk with head coach Tyson Summers and some of the players. We'll get to that in just a moment. But what did you get from the uh, press conference that we had, had a chance to talk with him. And I'd say one of the biggest things that, that he seems to be pretty strong on that we didn't really get as much in the spring is that he really seems to want one signal caller, if at all possible, uh, coming out of the fall camp into the first game of the season. Yeah, you never know what you're going to have to put up with, especially with four guys in camp. And I think they've got a, a combined total of maybe four or five snaps ever taken with the Eagles. So impossible to tell who's going to uh, make themselves known. Of course, LeBaron Anthony and uh, Shy Words, they were manning the show through the spring, but now a little bit more competition and a Juco transfer in Cato Brown, a true freshman and Jalen Frazier. So it's up for grabs, and I think that you're correct. He does want just one guy running the show. It's been a rarity to see a dual quarterback system work as well as it did for as long as it did with Kevin Ellison, Fabian Upshaw. I don't think that they're putting too many apples in uh, finding two guys who can go back and forth like that for the next two or three years. But again, remains to be seen. And right now, I think it's uh, up for grabs. That whoever impresses the most these next four or five weeks is going to get the, the tab on uh, opening day. And one of the things we're not as, as much scrutinized as the running back position because you've got a guy like – L.A. Ramsby, who is coming off an injury, didn't play, had a labrum issue uh, in the spring, just got cleared. He's back full force, and you also have Wesley Fields. Pretty solid there in the running back situation. We don't really know particularly how they're going to use it, but we know if it's anything like we've seen in the past with the triple option, usually you have a fullback, you have slot backs. We have like people like Miles Campbell, but I believe you're going to see maybe L.A. Ransby and Wesley Fields kind of split in time in the backfield. I would think that you would, but uh, again, uh, hard to tell exactly what this is going to look like in the spring. If you remember, not a whole lot done under center is primarily shotgun. I think that might be the majority of what they do, but it was far from uh, Eagle fans, far from seeing uh, the entirety of the playbook back in the spring. So I think that they've taken their time uh, throughout the summer. They're going to uh, take some time watching film as the fall progresses, seeing what they like, seeing what they can implement. And I think that as you see this season go on, you're going to see that offense start to expand, hopefully blossom. You know you've got two guys who can tote the ball in L.A. and Wesley. And then after that, it's going to turn into, you know, who 
adjusts into a ball carrier, which of those receivers is going to be uh, catching pitches, which ones are going to be throwing blocks, all that remains to be seen so far. One of the good things is they have talked about the offensive line, and it sounds like he's pretty excited about it. You bring in a guy like Bob Bodine, and things are going to fall into place to me because he's been with the option so long. It's not to down who's been there before, but this is a guy who comes in who knows the option, has worked on nothing but the option for quite some time. You have Brian Cook, you have uh, Justin Woods. You've got guys that seem to be on the same page, and that seems to be uh, something that the players are happy to have because they didn't seem like that was the case last year. Yeah, and when it comes to the offensive line or really in the option, you can expand that to receivers who are on the line blocking, an H-back, tight end, whatever you want to call them, uh, that's going to be blocking. The one word I heard a couple of times from Coach Summers that really had me excited was the word aggressiveness. He talked about the offensive line getting aggressive. He talked about him slimming down a little bit. To me, that means you know, shooting out of their uh, uh, stance at the beginning of the play, working their way into that second level. That's something that I don't think you saw a whole lot of last season. It was more try to block the guy in front of you, and, you know, that works well enough to, to get the guy to the line of scrimmage. But, you know, when you think of Georgia Southern option football, you think of those cut blocks being thrown on the edge. You think of that receiver holding his block downfield. You think of a, a lineman coming up and uh, hitting a safety there that springs that 30, 40 yard run. And when I hear aggressiveness out of the blockers, that's what I'm thinking. Hopefully, that's what we'll be seeing. Aggressiveness is also something that he's mentioned as far as the defensive side of the ball, wanting to get a little bit more pressure on the quarterbacks, maybe getting a few more turnovers than they did last year. Those are kind of some of the areas that kind of was a little bit different from the years past. They weren't real high, highly ranked as far as the nation goes with takeaways, with uh, quarterback sacks with interceptions, although overall the defense played pretty well last year. Right, and I think uh, if you remember back in the spring, there was uh, some sound bites coming from the coaches then, a defensive coordinator, Coach Zoe, talked about how you know he wasn't too worried about sacks, and you know that uh, perks up a lot of people's ears hearing that, especially when last year's team didn't have those sacks. I think that that might have been taken a little out of context. Hearing them talk about what they expect out of the defense, especially the defensive line this year, hearing what they've said about the strength and conditioning program, I think it's more about creating athletic guys who are long, who create havoc. And when you've got a quarterback on the run, when you've got him making throws quicker than he wants to, I think that's where it comes into his thinking of sacks aren't important. If you have the guy making a throw he doesn't want to make, that could end up just as well, especially with the experience that they now have in the secondary. All right, well, we talked about it. Let's get out and see what head coach Tyson Summers and some of the players had to say about being back in the fall camp. First day of practice, uh, I, I was very pleased with a lot of things. Uh, you can see, uh, you know, giddy energy, I would say. And, uh, and what I mean by that, a good example of uh, we had been out and kind of doing a, you know, a run-through period and what we kind of refer to as a polish period to start the day and uh, came over and, and got a uh, chance to come across Eagle Creek. And, you know, we go and, and, and mess up the stretch lines right out the gate. <laughs> and uh, there, there's 50 of them trying to go in 50 different directions because they're so excited about trying to get somewhere in a hurry and be able to do the stretch. And uh, so nothing that's uh, nothing's bad or nothing's wrong. I do think uh, they really tried today to do what we asked them to do. Uh, very pleasing for me and comforting for me just how much farther along we were, uh, you know, even today and, and how we practiced through the first hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes uh, of our practice. And uh, really clean and uh, trying to do what we wanted to do. Felt very comfortable in the practice schedule and what we were trying to get accomplished particularly defensively where, you know, again, they're really on year two and on offense uh, coming back in with a little bit different practice schedule from spring. I thought that uh, I thought that it was smooth. We've got to do a better job of not having so many balls on the ground, but that is a, a little to be expected on the first day, uh, whether it's quarterback center exchange or whether it's, uh, you know, some of the pitches on the perimeter today uh, that we had. Uh, I really think that we have to do a, a better job, and this is one of the challenges of just focusing through practice, you know, one of the one of the things that I felt like through last year that we had moments uh, where we played, you know, 34, 35 minutes really, really well throughout a game, but there may be a four or five minute lapse through the game where we didn't play particularly well, um, and, and it really hurt us. And so, what a big challenge for us through practice is making sure that we're focusing for the entire, you know, two hours that we're out there. Uh, we will be in a mindset of trying to take advantage of the new NCAA rule that gives us uh, the opportunity to come in a little bit earlier, which is why we started today. But 
but we feel like it's going to give us more downtime. We feel like it's going to give us more opportunity uh, to be smart with their legs and be smart with their bodies. We'll practice for three days and then have a recovery day through each one, practice for three days, and then have a total day off uh, really throughout the next five weeks. And uh, just excited about where we're at, excited about the young people. thought Dwayne Chandler and his staff did an outstanding job this summer uh, in our workouts and what they were able to push our young men to doing and uh, excited about getting going. The next two or three days are really just about teaching. Uh, you know, I am somebody, I've got, to, I've got to do a better job myself. I want to be a million miles an hour. I want to be rep, 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 and, uh, and, and uh, that's really not what we need to do. We need to do a good job of teaching. We've got a lot of young guys in here. We're going to count on, uh, uh, my assumption is that we're going to wind up counting on quite a few freshmen to wind up helping us, so we have to get our baseline taught correctly the first two or three days. And uh, so we are, we're a little bit different. Uh, you would probably notice from being out there today, the only time we really went against each other was Kelly and a man-to-man period. But we tried to spend a lot of teaching time on uh, on exactly what we're trying to do from an operation standpoint on offense and uh, and, and also what we're doing from a run fit standpoint on uh, on defense and tried to teach. Uh, I think the other thing is just trying to make sure that we're preventing injuries. Uh, if you notice today, if anybody was on the ground, I was trying to just – overemphasize trying to stay up and trying to be smart with what we're trying to get done. And we talked about it, you know, uh, a lot just where you are. We're going to be an inexperienced group. Uh, I do feel really good about um, the growth and, and, and uh, maturation of our offensive line. I think that truthfully they had the best summer of any group overall and, and how much they were able to improve. Um, and if you get a chance to look at them, their bodies look totally different at that position than they did um, a year ago or, or eight or nine months ago and um and so i certainly think that and the two backs obviously having guys with experience with wesley and la that have kind of proven themselves and miles being able to do all the things he can do uh but but there's a tremendous amount of work and you know we've got a lot of things we've got to work through to make sure we can kind of stay in our own identity and uh, and, and seeing how far we can kind of work outside of those boundaries at the same time and be able to have some different answers for things um, it felt good to always um, be out there with my guys because I wasn't, be, uh, wasn't able to be out there in the spring. So it felt pretty good today. Felt uh, a lot more excited than usual because, of course, I haven't played football in a long time. But it was good. Um, just getting the feel back, just um, getting the feel of being back into the offense and, you know, um, just running hard and, and fast and playing fast and knowing my assignments and get, keep my legs up under me all the way throughout practice. Got a little tired at the end of today. Uh, legs got a little heavy. We're doing things with Coach Cook that I've never seen the triple option before, and 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 I definitely like it because because I mean it, from what I see it works, and I've I've played the triple option since I was in 11th grade, and some of the things we're doing is just I've never seen before, and the lanes where we got out there to run is is very it's unbelievable from where we at now to where we was last season. I think it was pretty good, man. It was a lot of energy. Like I said, coaches came out with a lot of energy. Got the guys came out with a lot of energy, um, and I think everybody enjoyed it. Uh, we just got to keep it up throughout the whole practice, but I think it was pretty good today. I think for me, uh, I've always been a guy that just uh, led by example. So I think this uh, this camp, I want to talk more, be more vocal, um, but also still lead by example. We want to be known for being the best secondary in the country, really. I mean, we work, we've been working real hard this offseason with Coach Chandler. Uh, I mean, we talk the most junk to the team about how we're the best unit on the team, and that's just really what we want to be. We want to be the best in the country. Um, we had a lot of energy out there today. I mean, it was hot, but we got through it. Um, like Coach Summer said at the beginning, we were scrambling around, but we got together, got organized, and it was a great day in my opinion. Yeah, it feels awesome. Um, it's always it, it feels good always to um, run across the bridge, being out there with your teammates, getting yelled at by the coaches. But, I mean, it's part of football. We love it. That's why we do it. It's really mental. Um, with the heat coming down, getting yelled at, sometimes you don't want to hear it. But the way camp set up this year, coaches really um, set it around us to have a successful camp, um, just going three days and having the day off to recover. So that will, that will put, like, the grind kind of behind us. So uh, camp shouldn't really be that bad this year. Well, Mike, one of the things Coach Summers uh, mentioned during the press conference was the fact that things have changed a little bit. I know one of the problems that they had last year was some injury bugs, some, you know, maybe some mental and physical wearing down. 
uh, especially in the camp which is the, t the days leading up to the beginning of practice. Mm -hmm. Now they've been able to work uh, maybe a little smarter. The, uh, you don't use the words NCA and smart usually <laughs> uh, too often in sentences, but in this regard, they have kind of made it a little bit easier for the coaches and players to maybe work a little smarter. Yeah, things have worked out in Georgia Southern's favor in that regard. The NCAA now saying that you can start your fall camp three weeks before the beginning of fall classes, which for Georgia Southern comes a little bit earlier than a lot of the teams, especially uh, in the Sun Belt. So that's what's allowing them to start fall camp in July as opposed to August a lot of years. And they don't have a huge advantage in that there's still the same amount of days, same amount of hours that they're allowed to physically be on the field in pads hitting each other. So they're not going to get any more practice in in that regard. But what that bigger time period allows for is to go just three days in a row, then have an off day. You don't have those days, like you said, where when everybody's flying around trying to be intense, trying to win a spot, and you're on that fourth, fifth, sixth day in a row, that's when the injuries can happen. That's when the mental side can break down. And you're not learning, especially with a young team. A lot of guys trying to learn new roles. Maybe it helps to have three days of practice and then a day off where you can look at that film say no that's not right let's get it right today when we're not on the field and then get ready for three more days of getting it right on the field all right one other thing that we kind of brought up in the uh, press conferences that might be worth noting and that's the georgia southern as you mentioned was picked seventh in the league uh, by the media and the coaches and no players on the first or second team i don't think that's ever happened even when the first year of georgia southern being in the sun belt you had a, a, at least a couple players uh, being on there, you can use that as motivation, I guess, which it sounds like the players might be uh, doing. Or you can also look at that like, oh, no, where are you going to be able to do this year? Well, I think that you just take that on a player-by-player -player basis. You know, some guys are out there. They're pretty low-key. They're relaxed. They might see that. They think, oh, we're picked seventh. It doesn't matter. We have zero losses right now. If we keep it that way, it doesn't matter what – the coaches had to say at the beginning of the year the record is what's going to speak for itself same thing goes with the players uh picked to be first second team if wesley fields la ramsby if they decide to go out there and have a 1500 yard season score 10 or 15 touchdowns i, I don't think that uh the fact that they weren't on the list at the beginning of the year is going to come back to hurt them at the end of the year so right now all it is is paper you can take it for motivation if you want you can ignore it totally if you want Everybody does a little different. The important part is to just make sure that that doesn't stay quite as empty on the first and second team in a few months. All right, well, still quite a few questions left to answer before the uh, first game of the season against Auburn on the road. So we'll try to get to as much as we can between now and then. But for now, that'll wrap things up. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. We thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.